Hi there everyone, and today I thought I'd give you a quick run through and just overview of the UView interface. There's not enough videos of UView in operation and what it can actually do on YouTube I don't think, especially with the newly updated user interface, I think I've found about two videos maybe or something. So I've decided to do my own and just basically run through some of the functionality that UView gets you. Now, one thing that I have noticed, and I noticed this quite quickly, is that I don't actually have a BTTV package. The box that I'm using isn't a BTTV box, it's one of the generic Humax UView boxes. But because I'm actually using BT Internet, it's actually loading the BTTV menus and user interface. Doesn't really affect it much, it just shows you a different logo in the top left corner. But that's something to possibly keep in mind, so it detects what kind of ISP you're using. I believe the same thing happens if you're with TalkTalk. Talk. But yeah, this is basically it running without a BTTV subscription. For example, I'm on Sky Cinema Premiere here. Of course, I don't subscribe to BTTV, so if I try and hit OK here, it's probably not going to do anything. Yeah, we're well, not a BTTV customer. That's not really a problem because it doesn't actually take away too much of the functionality of these boxes. These, unlike Sky boxes, these can record, pause, rewind, all that kind of functions. The PVR still works without any subscription. And of course, there's access to loads of different on demand services as well. So, yeah. So, you see, we can start with the main menu here with the guide here. It shows you some shortcuts of what's on right now. So I quite like the pictures here, quite useful. We can scroll through, see what's on. So you can see Come Dine With Me is on channel four. We can push the information button, get a bit more information about it. You see, we can click on it and right away, we're gonna be watching it. So you can see we've got PVR functionality. We can pause the program can fast forward, we can rewind, and of course we can stop it as well, so I'm just going to switch back. Yeah, so that works pretty nicely. Let's go into the EPG here. So we just push the down arrow to keep going onto that. And I quite like the EPG really. I don't think it's as fast or as fluid as Sky's EPG. So we can type in the channel number, we can go straight to that channel on the guide. So you can see BBC One here. One thing that UView has always had the functionality to do is actually go backwards in the TV guide. I think this was one of the first services to ever do that. I think it was one of its party tricks or something. But as you can see, we can go backwards in the TV guide here. We can select a program that was on quite a while ago actually and play it straight on demand. So you can see, let's have a look at the channel 4 news for example, we can hit it and right away it's going to bring up the on demand player. So you can see all fours coming up here. And as you can see that's playing. So you might get an advert or two quickly. That is because it's just a generic on-demand service. And this does bring me on to one of the things about UView that I definitely have noticed is that the platform is a little bit slow sometimes. As you can see, it's just loaded up there. We can forward it, play around with it. As you can see, that's working quite nicely there, so we're going to back out of that. And we're going to re-return straight to the EPG again. So yeah, as I was saying, the platform is a little bit slow sometimes. Now, I'm not sure if that's because of my internet connection. The internet hasn't been great around here for a while now. But I'm also aware that the Humax DTR T2000 that I'm using is actually a quite an old model. It's from 2014. I believe there's newer models available from BT, for example, 
that actually performed quite a bit better. But still, it's not terribly slow. I mean, it's nowhere near as slow as some of the other surfaces here. So we go back on ZPG here. As you can see, a lot of these channels are subscription channels through Now TV that you get through BT TV. So if we go back to channel one here, for example. If we push the blue button, we can get to the categories so we can view HD channels. So the amount of HD channels you get do depend on, of course, your free view area and all of that. But let's let's watch the BBC News, for example. HD quality is pretty good. It's definitely comparable to Sky. In some cases, I think it's actually better than Sky, to be honest. So if we go to the menus again, of course, it stays paused. Now one thing you can probably hear in the background is the remote clicking. I am not sure if all UView boxes do this, but one of the biggest letdowns of the platform, I think, is the remote control. It seems to have this weird clicky buttons on it. Not all the buttons click, but some of the buttons do click. I'm really not sure if that's something I like or not really. It's a bit distracting maybe. Maybe I might have to get used to it. But I don't think the remote is as nice as, for example, what Skies would be. But I don't know if that's just something I need to get used to, really. So another important feature of the platform, of course, is the apps as well. We can view all different kinds of on-demand services here. For example, we've got Now TV, Channel 5, Netflix. So you're never going to be without something to watch on this platform, really. BritBox as well, that's available on it, UK TV. So let's select a service, for example, ITV Hub. And you can see the box right away will launch the correct on-demand service. There you go. And now here's one of the things that I am going to point out is that unlike a service, for example, like Sky, for example, most of these on-demand players you have to sign into already. But as you can see, the interfaces do load here. I've just gone into the browse mode here. Something that I do want to point out is the actual on-demand players themselves use the interfaces that the companies provide so it's not one consistent interface on the on-demand system as you can see the channel 4 one was different the ITV one's different this is something that Sky doesn't do of course on Sky everything's presented in one menu that could be a bit confusing for some people but really I don't think it's too much of a big deal One thing we do is we'll have as well is we have a search function as well. So this is one of the most important parts of UView, I feel. It's something that really does work quite well. So we can search for a program here. So for example, let's search for news. It's a bit difficult to put in. There you go, so for example, we've got BBC News here. An example, it loads all of the things that it's found. So we can find on-demand content here. Let's view everything that's found. As you can see, it's found 59 episodes of the BBC News special. And this is what I have pointed out, actually, is that Despite the on-demand players looking different, they actually function quite well through the search. So if you go onto one of these, you're taken straight to it. And it works really well. So back into the menu here. You can see we can get back to the search function here. 
My TV is where you store all the recordings that you've made with the unit. So, one thing I have noticed, I don't know if it's just a glitch, but it doesn't seem to be categorizing recordings at the moment. For example, I've recorded several episodes of Family Guy here, and they're all listed in different files here. Now, Sky has a serious stack feature, for example, where you can view everything in one neat little folder. I don't know if it's just a glitch, but it doesn't seem to be doing it right now. I can push the information button, get more info on it. I can watch the recording right away. Let's go back into that menu, My TV. I can look at the watch list. So this is things that I've watched on demand. There's like a nice little history thing there. Scheduled recordings. So that's basically what you're going to record. So the BT player is something that only BT TV customers can access. So for example, if I try and pick a BT player icon here, it's not going to work. And I think if you're using a TalkTalk Talk line as well, this is where the TalkTalk Talk services would appear as well. So as you can see, I don't think much is going to happen here. Yeah, you need a BT TV account. One thing you can do actually is you can push and hold the OK button to restart a program if it's available on demand. So that's quite nice as well. So we've got TV shows here as well, so it loads all the TV shows available. Things from on demand, it shows you whether they're free or subscription. So we can go into a full listing here. It pulls all the preview images from the internet, which is quite nice, so you can see what you're going to see. Push the information to get some info. So you can watch this on demand, add it to my TV, you can view more episodes. Same thing we saw earlier. So yeah, everything's accessed through the main home menu, which is found by pushing the UView button on the remote. And same thing for film and kids shows as well. So you can get access to different kinds of content. So if we go into the settings, for example, here we can check the settings of the system. As you can see how many aerial channels we have. I've got 143 through the aerial right now. I'm not in a place with great free view reception, so I'm quite surprised to be honest that that's working as well as it is. Of course, broadband connection settings. You do need a broadband connection, of course, to get this system fully up and running. Rather frustratingly, there's absolutely no Wi-Fi support. There's literally, the only option is to use a power line adapter or a directly wired ethernet cable. Quite frustrating, but there's definitely ways around it. They say that they're going to make a Wi-Fi adapter for it. They've been saying that for almost eight years now, but I don't think it's ever going to happen. See, we can view the signal strength here of the channel. Picture and sound quality, so I don't know what it's doing there. As you can see, we can use the antenna out as well, so we can watch over RF. Recordings, we can have automatically delete, confirm deletion. Power mode. So we can have also standby, always ready. Of course, if you want to use beta features, we can have that on as well. So, yep, turn that on there. Mobile devices, so you can choose whether you can control the system from a mobile device. There's an app available in the App Store as well. You can use that to schedule recordings and view the guide and things like that. Voice control, so something handy it does have actually is uh, 
there's a Amazon Echo skill available for it. So there's definitely something that can be quite useful to have really. You can control it with your voice. As you can see, we've got parental controls here, so I have no idea what the factory pin is. I think it's one, two, three, four. There we go, so we can show or hide the adult channels, restrict programs, things like that basically. So your basic parental control. Change the pin. Subtitles are available, of course. You can change the appearance settings a bit so you can turn off the transparency maybe. Make a high contrast colour scheme. And of course view whether you want the channel logos in the EPG or not. The audio description. Make your remote beep if you want. It is quite annoying. And just various information really. So you can see we've got the Humax there. Latest version of software. And of course, I can factory reset and delete all the recordings. So, yeah, there's quite a lot of functionality available on the UView, really. So, you can see, we're back in the TV guide here. One of the things that I do wish that they had was I wish that they. Uh, had a mini TV in the top right corner maybe or something like that. You can see the current program you are watching in the background so you're not really missing anything but I know the old version of the service had a mini TV but that's something I possibly would quite like maybe. Something nice as, you, as well you can do is you can push the yellow button on the remote and you can hide and show channels. This is something you can't do on Skype. So for example, if you want to hide channels you don't subscribe to, for example, so let's choose some of the Sky Now TV channels here. You can hide them off. These won't actually appear on the EPG at all. So we can view the I button as well, we can view information. You can set something to record. So it starts recording immediately. We can record the whole series or just the episode. Push record again to stop it. And you can see it already shows you what you have recorded just there. So you can push green as well. We can see what is on now. which doesn't seem to be doing anything, to be honest. Yeah, for some weird reason, it doesn't seem to be doing a lot, really, that function right now. Oh, I think that actually takes you to uh, the current time, actually, which is quite a nice feature, actually. So, for example, if you're scrolling all the way in the future of DPG here, so we see we're already at 5 a.m. tomorrow. Push the green button, we go straight back to what's on now. And of course we've got help features as well here. So as you can see, we can view different problems here. As you can see, weak chat signal here, you can see what changes you can make to see if you can fix that. So yeah, that was just a quick run view of what UView allows you to do and the general interface. So thank you very much for watching.